While the charming European badgers became the stars of a flash animated earworm, the honey badger has become internet famous for its resilience and supposed stubborn behavior when they interact with other animals larger and seemingly more dangerous than themselves. They are known for dominating nearly any challenge presented before them with their tough skin, facing off against lions in the African savanna, and easily escaping their enclosure in one viral video. Their resistance to bee stings and snake venom also invite fascination. These unusual animals, which are native to Africa and parts of Asia, resemble a cross between a skunk and a wolverine. However, they are in a Mustelidae family with the latter, along with mink, ferrets, and otters. They are known as honey badgers because of their fondness for feeding on bee larvae and honey. One can deduce that it would be a formidable challenge to keep a honey badger in a zoological facility, let alone as a private pet. However, is it even possible to own one? Honey badgers are actually uncommon to find in zoos. The first honey badger, or rottle, was housed at the Philadelphia Zoo in 1904. In 2014, there were as few as 15 individuals housed in zoos. However, this doesn't mean they aren't found in private ownership. In the United States, that's right, honey badgers have actually been offered for sale, usually to exhibitors with a USDA license, but occasionally even to fully private owners as pets. Therefore, yes, you can technically own a honey badger if it is legal to do so in your state, county, and general area. However, what kind of pets do honey badgers make? Unfortunately, there is very little information regarding keeping honey badgers in a domestic setting. They are by no means commonly owned, even by exotic mammal standards, and are usually taken on by those running a professional business. Like many exotic mammals, it's likely that temperament, as well as whether or not the badger is hand-raised, will play a significant role in how well it will adapt to a human household. There are some honey badgers that are tame, well, their version of tame. After all, a honey badger is still a honey badger. These animals are very strong and will spend plenty of time figuring out how to escape their enclosure, if it's at all possible. In one classified ad offering a pair of honey badgers to approved facilities, a hand-raised male is described as very tame and highly socialized, while a hand-raised three-year-old female is described as very docile and easy to work with. In another post advertising an 18 to 24 month old male, the description reads, he is calm and easy to work with, but it's a freaking honey badger, folks. All jokes aside, honey badgers are likely not so different from other mammals in their potential to become somewhat well-adjusted when kept in captivity. Just because these animals are aggressive and domineering in the wild doesn't necessarily mean that a domesticated, hand-raised version would present the same inhospitable temperament. In fact, honey badgers are used as ambassador animals at the San Diego Zoo and Safari Park. Their animals have been trained to use a harness, so the concept of keeping a honey badger as a pet is not outside the realm of possibility, provided that the owner can provide an adequate enclosure and tolerate less than ideal behavior. One facility in India created a specially designed enclosure for their honey badger that included reinforced concrete flooring, along with artificial burrows made out of pipes. Enclosures for honey badgers and other mustelids are recommended to have ample cage furniture and spatial complexity. Complexity. Like some other mustelids, honey badgers also enjoy digging. All of this, of course, would need to be able to withstand the beating from a determined and large mammal with long claws and considerable strength. Honey badgers are certainly not animals that can be maintained in a typical animal enclosure. Be prepared for a lot of cement and or metal. As far as care, some zoos feed honey badgers a diet of commercial carnivore formula along with home mice and insect prey. Even cat and dog food have been deemed acceptable for many exotic mustelid species. They have short and simple digestive systems and consume diets that are high in protein and low in fiber, just like domestic ferrets. Like all exotic animals, enrichment is important for overall welfare. However, the challenge of providing this for a honey badger is sourcing something heavy duty enough to not be instantly destroyed. Enrichment can also be provided in the form of operant conditioning training methods, which are also imperative to get the animal to willingly enter crates for general husbandry requirements. If you can meet these needs, maybe a honey badger is for you. But really, perhaps it is better to stick with the European badger, or even better, ferrets are the best representatives of the Mustelidae family to find for sale and care for. Let's leave honey badger ownership to experienced caretakers.